My son, nearly adult, recently got busted playing stupid pranks on one of his classmates. It involved a girl, a date, and a series of photos of the students circulating the school. Finally, my son fessed up to it. I gave him a choice to either write an apology letter to the classmate he pranked, or he could be grounded for three weeks. My son chose the three weeks. I suppose that's a pride thing. He spent the better part of it in his bedroom because he's been studying for assignments and exams, and I was fine with that. He's always been good with his grades, and he puts a lot of work into passing. Finally, about four days until the end of his punishment, I asked him if he'd like to watch a movie with the rest of the family. He said no. His test at school was the next day, and he had to study. Fine by me. I'm usually at work before he wakes up, so I went into his room before bed to wish him good luck, only to find his room empty. So I searched the house for him, figuring he could have gone down for snacks or used the bathroom, but he was completely gone. It was then that my husband discovered he'd cleverly removed the security screen from the window and had been sneaking out. So I threw his belongings out the window. Xbox, lamps, computer, clothes, posters. Yes, even the bed was dismantled and thrown out into the backyard. We kept all the lights on and retired to our bedroom, like we always do. It was about 10 p.m., and when I went downstairs, my son sat at the table with a glass of juice, saying he came down for a study break. When he finished his juice, he went back upstairs and came down a few minutes later. He didn't seem remorseful at being caught and merely said, Okay, busted. Where's my stuff? I told him it was all in his room. He found it all outside and threw a teenage temper tantrum about its unfairness. I told him he could either write an apology letter to us and we'd help him move his stuff back in, or he could move his own stuff back in, provided he wanted to move back in and put it all back together himself. So we got our apology letter, helped move things back in, and set his room back up with everything that wasn't broken. On top of this, he had to finish off his grounding and apologize to the classmate he pranked. The grounding lifted as planned, and he went to stay with my sister for the weekend in the country to clear his head. He must have told her what had happened, because I received a nasty phone call about how much of an idiot I am and how that was too much for a small offense. I personally feel as though it was justified after he completely ignored his punishment and lied and thought he was being sly about it. Am I the idiot? Everyone's the idiot here. Gee, I wonder where your son got his total inability to distinguish things like funny pranks or appropriate punishments from wanton cruelty. What do you think you accomplished with all of this? Other than wasting your own time and money on wrecking the stuff, you presumably bought him. What lesson do you think he learned besides, oh, he's stupid? You are the idiot. That's not a prank. That's straight out of bullying and reputation breaking. What he did was a pure evil move. And if you allow him to treat girls like this now as a teen, how will he treat them as he gets older? Apology letter? That requires face to face. Secondly, he's sneaking out of the house? That's in no way a small offense and your sister gets no say in how you parent your son, period. Would I have thrown everything out that I paid for? No. That's plain dumb because guess who's paying to replace them? I would have taken the door off the hinges, taken the Xbox, computer, etc., and left him with nothing but clothes and a bed. He could earn the rest back. You are the idiot. You ground him, yet he has an Xbox and a computer in his room? What? And an apology to that poor girl shouldn't have been optional. What he did would have traumatized that girl. An apology is not an and or in this situation. And his punishments had nothing to do with what he did to the girl. He got to have all his social media and entertainment. And if it involved a date, probably access to keep talking to the girl or harass her. Right? I was thinking, what kind of weak punishment is this? OP's son hasn't learned a damn thing. That apology isn't worth the paper it's written on. And you let him go to the country by his aunt to clear his head? No wonder he dared to be so cruel. One of my 26 female friends is really bigoted. He, 26, still has a really old-fashioned view of women and that they should stay home and cook for men and shouldn't challenge men in any way. And he also makes a slew of stupid jokes. 
So my friends and I usually just ignore him when he says that stuff. And he's actually a cool guy besides all that. I invited my big sister, 28, for dinner yesterday, since we hadn't seen each other in about two months. My sister is a stout feminist advocate, and in her free time, she advocates for equal pay and treatment for women in the workplace and other things of that regard. So I picked her up while also dropping off my friend at his house. And during the car ride, my friend was being an idiot and was making the same stupid jokes and remarks that he always makes. My sister told him to shut up. They actually had never met before, and he flipped out and spat out a slew of misogynist crap. And honestly, he was speaking so fast I couldn't even understand what he said. Dude was literally foaming at the mouth. We arrived at his house at that exact moment, so we got out of the car and slammed my car door shut. After my sister and I left for the restaurant where we were supposed to have dinner, my sister was angry and asked me why I tolerated him and why he was my friend. I told her the truth that I ignore what he says about women because other than that, he's a cool dude. My sister then got really mad and then she asked to be dropped off at her home instead of having dinner. I obliged, but it still sucks that we couldn't have dinner with each other. Am I the idiot? I've never approved what my friend says about women and never say anything in agreement with him. So what's the issue? Me saying anything won't change his mind and I didn't want to risk losing his friendship. You are the idiot. He's actually a cool guy besides all that, but he was literally foaming at the mouth while telling someone how much he hates women. Defending your sister isn't even my main issue. Spending time with and defending an idiot like this who spends his free time hating on women says more about your character than his. We need more men to stand up for what's right in the world and to stand by allowing people to spew misogynistic crap like this isn't the way to do it. Do better for your mother, sister, future wife, and daughters. Do better for yourself. What was OP thinking? To put him in the car with the sister? You knew that no matter what he said, he would be hurting her. And then after you told her that it basically doesn't matter that he hurt her because he's a cool dude. If I was your sister, I'd never speak to you again because you basically just said, I don't care if people are absolute idiots to you and make you feel like garbage as long as they otherwise pass the vibe check. Congrats on also being misogynistic and pushing your sister out of your life. What OP actually means, my friends and I condone what he says by staying silent as we think he's cool. It doesn't hurt us, so I don't care, honestly. I find what he says funny, and I wish others would just shut up if they have a problem, as they are just creating drama. You are the idiot, OP, and I hope your sister now sees how pathetic an individual you are and cuts you out of her life. If you willingly hang out with idiots, you're the company you keep. I, 34 female, am the firstborn child from my father's, 68, second marriage. My dad married my stepmother, 60, very young, as she had gotten pregnant with my oldest stepbrother, Mark, 48 male. They had two more children in total together, Mindy and Martin, 44 female, 40 male. They divorced because my stepmother was cheating on him with another married man. He married my mom a few years later, and we're four siblings in total, me, Adam, Anna, and Aaron, 30 male, 26 female, 23 male. There have always been rumors that my two youngest step-siblings, Mindy and Martin aren't my dad's, but the AP's children. But we've dismissed them as we don't have much of a relationship with them from the get-go. My stepmother is really a toxic person who we've avoided most of our lives. And because of her, the relationship between our step-siblings has always been strained. Dad is a hugely successful business owner and he's always provided for all his children. He has paid for all our educations so we could all live a debt-free life, has helped with businesses or getting us work, even helped us buy our own homes. A few years ago, when Martin was jailed for fraudulent checks, my father paid all of his fines, bail, and lawyer fees, including the amount he owed, all 300K in total. Yet he hasn't received so much as a thank you from any of my step-siblings. Instead, they constantly fight with him, accusing him of liking my siblings and me over them, and resent my mother for no apparent reason. They've always used father as a money bag and felt entitled to it, in fact. 
Mark recently came over to Dad and told him that he needs to know what Dad intends to leave them in his will to make sure they'll be treated fairly. This made me angry as Dad is healthy and fit as ever. So I suggested all of Dad's children take a DNA test. Then we can go over his will and what he wishes to leave us. Apparently, this was the wrong thing to say. Soon I was getting angry calls from my step-siblings and stepmother, calling me all sorts of names. And my stepmother even called me a wicked, foolish little wench. While Dad hasn't said much on the matter, he has become awfully quiet, which is what he does when he's upset. Whether it's with my stepbrothers or me is what I'm unsure of. My mother did say that I shouldn't have said anything knowing how volatile my stepmother and step-siblings can be. And we could have dealt with this issue when the time was right. So, am I the idiot here? Not the idiot. It's disgusting to ask a parent what they're going to leave you in a will. Your half-brothers seem awful. They can't use the excuse that their mom brainwashed them because they're adults. And I thought me and my brother had it bad with our half-sister. I really hope your dad leaves them a dollar in his will. Offer your dad a dinner with you, your brothers, and your mom that will cheer him up and make him feel loved, not just at the moment. You are the idiot. Your dad knows there's a chance any of the older siblings may not be his since the SM cheated on him, and that's why they divorced. But obviously, he's still treating them the same. If he had any reservations... He could have gotten a paternity test in any of the previous 40 plus years since they've been born. A paternity test probably will not matter as he's been treating these kids as his since they were born. It's none of your god darn business who or what he leaves in his will or whether they are or are not his biological children. I know Mark was being rude and asking what he would get, but your snarky remark did not make anything better. I-24 female was a bridesmaid a while back, and I had to get a formal lavender dress. It was custom fitted for me. My aunt loves to stalk social media and somehow likes to create problems where there are none. She posted, Abby, my teen cousin, would look gorgeous in this, and she wants to wear it to prom this year. I again wore the dress to a last minute New Year's Eve party. My aunt once again post, don't be getting any stains on Abby's dress. I ignored them, because I had no intentions of loaning Abby the dress. Abby is curvy and her bust and hips wouldn't fit in the dress without major alterations. She's also shorter than me, so it would have to be altered in length. My grandma texted me about it's now Abby's dress and her prom's coming up and how she thought my aunt and I had an understanding. I said we didn't and I just said I never saw my aunt's comments because both pictures got so many and no one said anything in person. My grandma was upset that I said the dress was custom and made to fit me anyway, so I wasn't loaning it out. But my grandma seemed to understand and said Abby couldn't probably fit in it anyway because I'm a twig. My aunt somehow got into a fight with both my mom and grandma. She has yet to even talk to me and just left those two comments and publicly posted a huge Instagram and TikTok story where we're all body shaming her daughter, calling her fat, and won't let her wear the prom dress she was promised back in October. She tagged me in the post where I had to take down my TikTok and Instagram because of her. Abby's school friends and family members started messaging me, calling me all sorts of names. I never called Abby fat, and I'm sure my mom and grandma didn't either. I think they just said the dress was custom and Abby probably couldn't fit in it. No one body shamed a freaking teenager like my aunt made it out to be. We just said she couldn't have the dress for prom. Am I the idiot? What I should have done differently is stop my aunt in both October and January when she kept calling it Abby's dress. I didn't expect it to get out of hand like this. And all I said is Abby and I have very different body types. Not the idiot. I would pretty much tell your aunt she can either take down those posts and apologize or you will sue her for defamation, which is what she's doing. If you and your cousin have different body types, it makes no sense you lending the dress. I have bigger hips than my best friend, for example, so something custom made for her won't fit me. Your aunt is an entitled bully, and someone should put her in her place. I wonder how much Abby is really involved in this. There's been no direct contact or social media posting on her part. 
The aunt likely tagged Abby in whatever post so they'd be visible to her friends. I'm sure the aunt has been spewing all this nonsense aggressively to Abby too. I feel bad for her. Or Abby's also getting people to harass OP. She could be just like her mother. I would go to the police and make a report if your horrible aunt had you doxxed at work over a prom dress. Even if they say there's nothing they can do to stop it, make the report so there's a history of a complaint against her. Ask one of the officers to provide her a copy of the report. Then it's going NC until eternity because you're so much better off without that mess in your life. And to be petty, I would be wearing that dress all over town on the day of prom, grocery shopping, a walk in the park, dinner out with friends, and take lots of photos. Okay, so I, male 18, am off to college next year. I'm going far, far away from home, all because I hate my stepmom. I'll admit I never gave her much of a chance to be a mom to me since I was already 13 when she moved in. My stepmom never made it easy to like her either. When she moved in, she demanded my stepsister get to my room because my room was connected to a bathroom. Looking back, it wasn't a big deal, but I still felt really disrespected and it made me really mad for some reason. She would always favor my stepsister and tried to get my dad to be the father she didn't have. My dad was still grieving over my mom dying, so he was willing to do whatever to have that happy family feeling again. I don't blame him because he was always a family man. So things just got progressively worse in high school. My dad never went to any of my basketball games because my stepmom convinced him that my stepsister deserved more support since the girls' games had fewer fans. It's not a big deal, but it hurt that my dad rarely watched me play. There was a bunch of other stuff that I'm not gonna mention. We live really close to a really good college, and I got into it with my stepsister. She was super excited since we are best friends to go there. I told both her and my parents that I was not gonna go there. I'm going to this school that's eight hours away. That's still pretty good, and close to my real mom's side's grandparents. Last week at a family dinner, my stepmom just straight up asked why I was going so far away. I told her it was because I hated her and didn't want to be around her. I'll admit, it's a little harsh, but I told her the truth. Both my dad and stepmom are now mad at me, and I'm just kind of staying out of the house as much as possible. So, am I the idiot? Edit. Things are going south and I'm fully preparing for them to kick me out. I heard them fighting over what to do, so I don't know. We'll see what happens. Not the idiot, but you have a dad problem as much, if not more, than a stepmom problem. You say he's a family man? Well, guess what? You're a part of that family. I mean, yeah, your stepmom put her kid first, which sucks. But your dad was responsible for making sure your needs were being met and failed big time. He brought this woman into your life at a very significant time period in your life, and he allowed her to treat you the way that she did? And worse, he participated in it to appease her. No, both the stepmother and father are equally to blame. Why does the stepmother get a pass? I can't believe your dad is mad at you. What is he mad about? Disturbing the peace? Good for you for choosing your mental health over college rankings. However, since they do matter in my experience, I will also ask you if you can go to one closer or go low or no contact with them. It gets way much easier after moving out.